Hi, welcome to Data Structures in 5 Minutes. This is the fourth of fifth videos on sorting. Today we'll be talking about bucket sort, counting sort, and radix sort. And these sorts are all not comparison based sorting algorithms, but more like classification. Well, there isn't a specific name. What's important is that they're all, they all run in linear time when implemented correctly. And you'll see that the one limitation uh, for bucket sort and counting sort is that your range of keys can't be too big, and we'll see why. So first, let's walk through bucket sort. And so I have a singly linked list of items with strings, apple, car, a, dad, and by. And I want to sort them. Um, so first what I have to do is make the queues, uh, make an array of queues um, that maps the keys. Uh, so here we only have a range of four possible keys. Um, I'm just basing it off the first letter. And so we've made our queues, and you can see why this is expensive if the range of our keys is huge, because you'll have to make a ton of queues, and you won't even get to sorting by, um, by the time we're like halfway through all our t allotted time. So first, um, Apple goes in here, so I'll enqueue this, Apple. And then car goes in here. Then A, it gets enqueued behind Apple, and you can see here that bucket sort is stable in this regard. Uh, dad goes here, and by goes here. And after you're done in queuing all the objects, you concatenate the queues. And so you have apple, a, by, car, and dad in that order. And so that's how bucket sort works. And you can see that bucket sort is a lot like hash tables without the compression function and, uh, and unlimited keys. And you can see why bucket sort is limited because um, you, you must have a very small range of keys or else your, um, your runtime will blow up. And so bucket sort runs in O of the number of elements that you want to sort plus the number of keys because you need to have this be the um, initialization of all the queues. And so if K is in big O of N, then this simplifies to big O of N. Let's talk about counting sort now. Counting sort is a special case of bucket sort where you just have numerical keys. And so the first thing you want to do is create a histogram of all the keys. So we need to see how many of each key there is. Um, there's one zero, two ones, one two, two threes, and one four. And so now you're done with this step. The next step is to see which is the right index to, what, uh, to put the um, keys. And so you want to see the earliest possible index that you can put any of these. The first one is obviously zero here, but there, there's one zero, so you know that one has to be at index one. There are two ones, so two, the first place two can be is at index three. Um, there's one two, so three can go first at index four, and since there are two threes, four can only go first at index uh, six. So good. Uh, we got the indices down. Now all we have to do is go through the original input list and place all the um, elements based on the work we've done already. So we first start with 3. 3 goes to index 4. So after you're done placing this, you want to increment the index. 0 goes to index 0, and you still have to increment this index. Um, it doesn't change. Um, 2 goes to index 3. And this becomes 4. 4 goes to index 6. And this becomes 7. Uh, 1 goes to index 1. Um, 3 goes to index, sorry, this is still 4. 3 goes to index 5. And 1 goes to index 2. And this becomes a 3. So your new counter is 1, 2, 4, 6, 7. And your output array is 0, 1, 1, 2, 3. It's all sorted and very pretty. And this also runs in O of n plus k time. And remember, if k is in big O of n, um, 
the runtime simplifies to open. So that's why having as few keys as possible is, um, is optimal for counting sort and bucket sort. Finally, if you do want to sort with unlimited keys, radix sort is a good solution. And what radix sort does is that it does counting sort on each digit of the key. Um, a radix is another word for digit. Um, and you can have different bases. So radix sort does not have to be for decimals, so it can also extend to, um, well, um, base 16 numbers, for instance, even base 100 numbers, depending on how big your list is. And so what you do is you sort each digit, um, and the process of sorting each digit using counting sort is a pass. So radix sort does a lot of passes over the array. And you start with the least significant digit, the smallest one, and then you build up to the most significant digit. And <coughs> you'll see that radix sort uses the stability of bucket sort and counting sort in order to do its job. And so here's an example, base five numbers. Remember, we want to sort the least significant digit first. So we do our little counts array business. There's one of each which means there's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is where we put them. And so zero, uh, 1 goes here, right? So that's 41. 2 goes to 2, um, 32. 10 goes to 0. 3 goes to here. Um, this becomes 4. And 24 goes here and becomes 5. So now we've sorted our, well, we've gone through our first pass, and now we have to do our second pass. Do the same thing. We realize that there's only one of each again, um, by accident, of course. And so after you do the histogram, you do the indices. This is very simple. And now you follow, you go through this order and order them based on what you have here. So 10 is 1, we look at this digit 1, 41 is, uh, goes to index 4, 32 goes to index 3, 3 goes to index 0, right? and 24 goes to index 2. And you can see that this array, uh, this input list is now sorted and outputted. Good. So now, a uh, bit of discussion on the runtime, it's actually pretty complicated. So the first part of the runtime, right, is the amount of time we did making the counting sort of each pass. And we know from here that it should be linear if you do your keys correctly. And m multiply that by the number of passes you make. Number of passes is quite tricky to calculate, but it happens to be the ceiling of the number of bits that your integers represented in divided by log of the number of buckets you use. So just as a quick example, um, Java has um, an integer class with 32 bits. Now if you chose your Q to be, um, say, 16, so base 16 numbers, right? Um, Sorry, let's make this bigger. Say Q is 256 buckets. So we have 256 places, um, uh, possible digits. And so this is 2 to the 8. So when you log base 2, that you get 8. Uh, 32 over 8 is 4. So you'll have to make 4 passes. So now if Q were 16, see how many passes it'd take. It'd take you. Um, this becomes uh, 2 to the 4, this is 32, and you have to make 8 passes. On our homework, so, um, we had integers and um, um, base 16 buckets, and so that ended up taking 8 passes. But anyway, that's just a quick aside and a quick example of how to calculate the number of passes. So now we have O of n plus, uh, let me use k here, lecture notes used q. Um, K. K is the number of keys, right? And N is the number of elements. And so 
we want to choose a k that's approximately n, so let k equals let k equal to n. And so the number passes becomes O of 1 plus b over log n, and this is just the same thing as this here. Um, and when you plug that in back here, the k becomes an n, right? And n plus n is still n um, in big O notation. And you just distribute that to here and get n plus nb over log n. And that's the total runtime of radix. And good. Sorry this went a bit over, but we'll wrap up sorting in the next video, talk about which algorithm is best to use.